Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to the next lesson in our modern C++ series. In this lesson, we're going to continue exploring the standard template library, specifically in the algorithm library. Now, if you've been watching this series, we've been looking at some of the non-modifying sequence algorithms, things like comparison, searching for elements, and so on. But now we're actually going to look at some particular algorithms that might modify the actual container. This one that we're going to look at today is going to modify it sort of, but it's just actually going to copy elements. In fact, it's the algorithm for copy. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at it on our favorite website, CPP Reference here. And let's go down to the algorithms library. And now I'm going to scroll all the way down. So again, we've been looking at non-modifying sequence operations. And let's scroll down to the modifying sequence operations. Now, some of these might modify the actual original container, whereas others, like we're going to talk about today, like copy, for instance, are going to copy that container into some other data structure, and then we can modify that. So copy some or all of the elements. So let's go ahead and take a look at copy here. And we can see that there's a few different uh, overloads for this. Uh, we're going to pay attention to the C++ 21s primarily here. And basically, uh, what we've got here is we're going to take an input, uh, the first iterator, and then the last iterator. So that's our range here, this pair of iterators. And then where we're going to output to. Now, I'll talk a little bit about this and show you something new that we haven't really seen. Um, I think if you've been watching all the videos in this series, which I know you have, I know you've been uh, on my website and keeping track of your progress. Um, then you might have seen this thing called a front inserter or a back inserter, um, which are helper functions for um, uh, setting up these iterators here. They are output iterators that we can use. Okay. Um, but let's take a look at copy. And basically what it does is copies the elements of the range defined by, you know, first and last. So our two pair of iterators and moves them into another range here. So again, just to illustrate this, uh, if I have some data structure or something like this here, and I have two iterators here. Let's put in some elements here, uh, seven, uh, nine, something like that. So here will be my first, here will be my last. And then I'm going to create uh, some new destination here. Let's make sure it's the same size here where I have one, two, three, and seven. So I get my copy here from vector one to my V1 uh, copy here. Okay, so that's the basic idea what copy is doing. There's a bunch of different overloads for this, but we're going to just start with uh, copy for now here. Okay, now complexity wise, this is literally looking at our, our range here, and it's going to be a uh, linear time, however many elements that we are copying. Okay, now again, different um, uh, that might come with a different sort of cost depending on the data structure uh, that's in your container that you're copying. But again, it's going to be linear with the number of elements that you have, right? Um, all right. So generally speaking, copy is, again, a nice algorithm to use. And that's at least a start for uh, doing copy. Uh, I'll, I'll make a note here. If you're coming from more of a C background, you might be used to using like memmove, which is a copy uh, of your memory into a new uh, location. Um, it says here that your implementations in practice are probably using memmove. Maybe they're doing other smart things. And maybe if we look at this, um, you're able to even do this in parallel in some cases, the copy. So um, for now, copy is a good uh, algorithm to use as a building block. And then if you think you've got some way to copy things in a more intelligent way, of course you can upgrade it. But uh, you know, this might be a uh, you know reasonable implementation here to just copy things one at a time. Or again, I think if you've done stuff in um, you know other languages and can do a sort of bit uh, uh, copy of of the actual data structure, maybe serializing your data and then just doing one uh, mem copy or one mem move, uh, that's that's pretty efficient. Okay, and copy says in practice some of the implementations might actually do that, but. Regarding those uh, details or those details aside, let's go ahead and take a look at copy here. Uh, so if we have some sort of vector here where we're copying to, and the important thing to note from here is that I've set up a vector here or on the documentation they have, we'll do this the same. Uh, they're populating it with something known as IOTA and we'll get into that with more uh, generative uh, algorithms. Um, but IOTA is a great one to know about. Um, but then we have our two vector and you'll observe that this is uh, empty here. Okay. Uh, and that we're basically going to uh, populate it by inserting it into it here. Okay. So let's go ahead and uh, recreate this example here. I'm going to leave this here. I think we'll, we'll look at copy if and some of these other ones uh, later. 
Uh, but I think this is going to be a fun one to play around with for now. Um, so let's just do a basic test. I think we'll have... Yeah, let's do one uh, test here. Um, let's go ahead and set up our vector here, V1. Um, and let's just go ahead and set it up with some elements here. Uh, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, something of that nature here. Um, and then let's go ahead and create our copy. Uh, this is going to be our uh, copied vector here. V1 copy. And then let's go ahead and run a copy here. Uh, and again, we're going to take a uh, range here. So from the uh, beginning here to the end. And then we've got this uh, back inserter here. Okay, so let's go ahead and play with that back inserter. Uh, where are we copying to is basically what this is asking here, okay? Uh, and that's our V1 copy, or, or you know, uh, let's call this V1 uh, destination would be another way to put it. I'll, I'll leave it as copy, actually, that's fine. Uh, but that's the basic idea here, okay? And now let's use a uh, range-based for loop here. Let's just use our uh, elements here. We'll do this by reference so that it's uh, fast here. And let's look at our V1 copy and let's just print everything out on uh, a new line here okay something like that okay so let's go ahead and give this a uh, compile here see if I did everything right and yeah here we are brilliant so our copy here one three five seven nine eleven we get an exact copy here now um, again thinking about how this works here is uh, basically uh, our v1 copy here let's go ahead and uh, move those out here i mean when i initially start this off okay so here's v1 uh, and here's v1 uh copy uh i have basically an empty data structure here okay and then every time that i am uh when i run copy again it's sort of doing an element by element uh comparison here now what i don't know uh and what we have to look at the implementation is is this smart enough that it allocates four blocks of memory for our container. Okay, I suspect there might be some specialization for this. Um, and, and basically what I wanna do here is a little performance experiment to see, you know, how long is this copy taking? Cause there's a little trick, um, and I've talked about this before in some of my talks here where we might want to, for instance, do like V1 copy uh, reserve. And if I know, you know, V1 uh, size effectively, will that um, effectively, uh, you know, if I go to our uh, diagram here, will it basically give us this block of four elements so that I don't have to keep allocating and then fill them in versus uh, adding one element and then deciding I need to double and then effectively saying, well, we need to add some more elements and then it, you know, reallocates again. Um, so these are the kind of the, the performance details that we sort of want to know about uh, algorithm um, to see if it's efficient or not. Generally speaking, they're performance enough. Um, but if you need, you know, super performance, you want to know uh, that this works here. So let's set up just a little bit of an experiment here. Uh, but before I get into that, uh, this back inserter thing, I just want to show you quick. Uh, let's go ahead and just open that in another tab here. We can see this is part of the iterator library. Uh, and let's go ahead and open this up. Um, and basically what it does, uh, the back inserter uh, is for some uh, particular container. Uh, and we've got const expert versions of it. So let's look at the C++20. Um, it's a convenience function template that constructs a uh, back insert iterator for the container. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually look at that here. Um, and this basically is a output uh, iterator. It's one of the legacy ones. Again, we've got to talk about ranges and stuff. But if we went ahead and look at copy here, it is one of these uh, output iterators here. Okay, because we're outputting or writing to some particular data structure. Okay. Um, so that's the idea here. Uh, and usually you'll see back inserter or front inserter. Now, if I'm doing a front inserter, let's go ahead and just change this around here a little bit. Uh, let's do front inserter and run it. Uh, think about what's actually going to happen before I run this, right? Because instead of inserting in the front this time, or excuse me, instead of the back, I'm always copying the element as I iterate through. So one, putting in the front, three, putting in the front, five, putting in the front, okay? So this is effectively a way to, uh, oops, I gotta make sure I don't uh, mess up our code here. Let's see, let's get rid of that reserve. Uh, oops, push front, let's see. 
Uh, oh, I guess it doesn't like... Uh, ah, because Vector doesn't have uh, push front. Uh, I've got to change this example. Uh, but it is effectively a way to switch our data structure uh, or to reverse it. Uh, let me find something. Uh, let's go to... C++ reference, our containers. Let's find something that has a push front here. Uh, a deck should have a push front. Push front. There we are. Uh, so let's go ahead and do this properly. Uh, deck. A deck. Uh, I think I got them all here. Just need to include double-ended Q here. Uh, and there we are. Okay, so now we've effectively reversed this data structure. Phew, okay. <laughs> uh, so we could do that. Um, there's actually an algorithm for, uh, well, let's actually look here. Uh, let's look at our uh, vector and our deck for instance here. Let's see if it has reverse here. Uh, does it have reverse? Because maybe there's a more uh, efficient way to do this. Um, yeah, okay, I guess not. Um, how would we do this with a, uh, a vector here? So I showed you with a deck how we could, you know, use the front or the back inserter to uh, create the copy that's reversed here. Uh, we will have a few different options here. Um, maybe I could do R begin and R end. Let's see if that works here. Uh, let's do back insert, right? So we're using our reverse iterators. And we've got a random uh, access data structure. Again, let's let's recall, let's practice reading our documentation again. So let's go to our iterators. Uh, and we do have a reverse. Okay, so that's good. Uh, so let's go ahead and run this. And that'll do the trick here. Okay. Um, so again, didn't have the front inserter, but we can still iterate through this 11, 9, 7, etc. Inserting into the back of another vector if you want to reverse it. Okay. So anyways, that's the idea here. Now, continuing forward, let's go ahead and talk about our little performance experiment here uh, to see if we can, for instance, reserve. Uh, let's see uh, if this will work here. If I can reserve the size ahead of time. Yes. Okay. So we can do our... Uh, with the V1 size I was looking for. Uh, let's go ahead and see if we can do our iota here. Uh, and we haven't talked about this. We will talk about this in a specific video here. Uh, but this is iota. Um, and basically this just fills our data structure uh, from the beginning to the end. This one's just filling it with a zero here. Um, yeah, we'll go ahead and set the capacity to um, something reasonably large here. Uh, stood iota, um, and this is gonna be v1 from the beginning to the end. Uh, I don't know, I'll put in one. That's that's the step here, okay? Uh, okay, let's go ahead and do our uh algorithm here. Whoops, uh, iota is part of a different, I think it's part of numeric, yes, okay? There we are. So we'll get into numeric algorithms later on. Uh, if I do this, it takes a little bit of time. Great. Okay, but it is reversing it. Um, but now I want to see if if we need to reserve before copy. Again, this is a little bit of a trick here um, for us. So let's do a little uh, performance experiment and profile this um, and see how much time this takes. Now, I think we're spending a lot of time printing stuff out. So I'm going to comment this out for now. And let's just go ahead and get a sense of you know how long this is taking. I'll run the time here just so you can gather a little bit of a profile. And it's taking, yeah, 0.34 seconds. Let's see if um let's see if we can make this a meaningful uh test here where I don't reserve for my copy. And we just use the back inserter. Okay, let's see what that behavior is. Uh so let's just run test one now. I'll change things a little bit. And let's just run test zero, see if we get similar marks here. Okay, similar marks here. We've got to scale this up here. 4 int i equals 0, i less than, again, uh, uh, i plus plus. Let's do a little test here. Now here in my algorithm video, I'm using a raw for loop, um, but you know, that is how it is. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and see how our version does without... Uh, or with the reserve, let's see if it's uh, fast enough. And this might take a few moments. So I'll go ahead and pause the video. Actually, uh, that was taking way too long. So I'm going to create a little bit of a smaller experiment here. <laughs> let's see if we can 
uh, tease something out here. How about uh, 10,000 iterations here? Uh, let's go ahead and uh, give that a try here. <laughs> That's taking way too long. Uh, oh, let me make sure I save. And this is again going to be our sort of optimized run first. Let's see how it does. And I reduced it down just a little bit down to 1,000 iterations again. Uh, so that took about um, 26 seconds or so uh, to run on the real time. You know, the system was actually doing stuff. Uh, so now let's go ahead and try this for our other test here. Now, this isn't a perfect experiment. We'd want to randomize this, um, you know, try some other stuff here, set up a better uh, bench framework. Again, um, if you've been watching this series or some other videos, I talk a little bit about performance. Um, you know, experiments that are a little bit more interesting, but uh, let's go ahead and try this out. Let's see the results. Let's see if there's a difference or if copy kind of optimizes things uh, and we could just take it as it is. So I'll hop back in once this finishes. So interestingly, it looks like um, with this example here, uh, and let's make sure that we did everything basically the same here, um, reserving our memory. So the only different thing here is that we didn't reserve uh, ahead of time. Now, I wonder, again, if we do this copy, if it's just smart enough to see. Uh, and again, we'll have to look at the actual implementation here and just reserve um, memory here. Because basically what we could do here is, uh, or what I would do if I was implementing this, right? We learned about uh, std uh, distance, which would give us the difference between these two iterators, which for a vector is pretty um, trivial to do, right? Uh, because it is a contiguous data structure. Uh, you could just do the reserve inside of the copy here and then insert elements. So good to see, you know, we might want to experiment with this a little bit more. I get, I suppose it took a little bit more time. So maybe there was, you know, uh, 0.6 extra seconds. So um, again, it's just something to uh, consider. I would probably still reserve the memory just explicitly here. Uh, it looks like it is making a difference on the system time here. Maybe this isn't a large enough uh, collection. Again, 1 million times uh, 4 ints uh, roughly behind the scenes. You know, that's not a huge, huge number. But again, if you have larger data structures, uh, we can actually try this out. So try this experiment out. See uh, how the results work. But now you know about how copy works and, uh, you know, really useful thing to, to use um, when you want to copy a container or part of a container into some other data structure. Again, maybe you want to mutate it or only copy half of the data structure. Again, this makes it uh, really trivial to do uh, with using iterators. So with that said, folks, hope that was interesting. Hope you enjoyed that little um, aside on the performance experiment. And I'll be curious if you try it out. Uh, try it out, post your results in the comments below. Let me know what you find. Try allocating a really big class in a vector. And if you have more time, uh, you know, let it run with a really big example um, and uh, report back the results. I'll be curious to hear. Anyways, with that said, folks, hope you enjoyed that video and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.